Um, I don't know. I don't know how to say it, but that was incredible. Um, all those kind words. If somehow we can turn people to Jesus, He is the answer for our world. Yes, yes. Jesus is the answer. Is the answer. And that's really today why we're here. Maybe someone here today will make your decision, make your choice. Others, hopefully, you will reconfirm the choice you have made to follow Jesus. And we're thrilled to have, I'm thrilled to have all of our guests with us today. And our good friends, my wife and I have good friends, brother and sister Armstrong. We thank you for being here. He's going to bring the word. And, and I hope he gives his wife opportunity to at least greet you. Everybody said amen. 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 God bless you. Please, Brother Armstrong, come. Praise the Lord, everyone. Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. That's all the Spanish I got, right? <laughs> What an honor to be here at Living Hope today. Sí, no estar aquí en estar acá I feel the presence of the Lord. Don't you feel it? I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit. That weaves us together in the family of God. Amen. Honored to be here today. And I have enjoyed what's happened already. We've already heard some great messages today. Thank you, Brother Philip Harding. What is your story? Amen. God still writes your story. Amen. And Sister Aruni. I must be about my father. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. You Amen. praise God. Appreciate your word today. Amen. And then we've just witnessed a great worship. Amen. From Brother Doug State. Amen. 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 I'm honored to meet him and his family. You know, when your brother shows up and appreciates you, that says something. Amen. Those that know you well. And I can say this about Pastor and Sister State. I travel all over the United States and Canada and even some places beyond. Listen to me. There are none better. No, So, appreciate your spirit and your leadership and your friendship. Amen. Don't you love your pastor today? And the vision for this city. Around the city last night and today there are works all over the place. And we're thankful for what God is doing. We were with Brother Sister Garza last night. Amen. Amen. God is doing great things. But I believe the best is yet. Amen. Praise God. It is good to have my wife here with me today. She'll probably shoot me, but I want her to come. <laughs> and I want her to greet you. I want Susan. Praise the Lord. I just want to remind us all today. What a great, big, wonderful God we have. Yes. I was not ready.
tuvo crecido para irme a la iglesia cada semana. My, my family were good people. Mi familia era buena gente, but we just didn't go to church. Pero no fuimos a la iglesia. One month before I turned 15, un mes antes de llegar en la edad de 15, a friend invited me to a United Pentecostal church. Oh, una amiga right. me invitó a una iglesia right. unida pentecostal. Yeah. There were only about 20 people there. Casi 20 personas allí. But I was amazed at how much these people seemed to like being there. Pero yo estaba asombrada en cuánto le gustan estar allí las personas. They enjoy church. Yeah. 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 And that's amazing. So I kept going. Entonces, si, si yo, me, None of my family ever came to church with me. La otra familia no vinieron, nunca vinieron conmigo, but I kept coming. Pero yo seguí de, de venir. And I have learned so many things. Yo he aprendido yeah. tantas cosas. I've learned that God is all powerful. He has healed my body of two diseases. He has given me a wonderful husband. He has great children. He has helped us to start a church in Tennessee. And he has blessed us abundantly. The God that we have can do anything. He has your best And if you will open yourself si to him, a él, he can do great things no for you. Thank you. Gracias. Amen. 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 Now, I work with North American missions. Yo traba trabajo con los misioneros norteamericanos. What God has currently called me to. Donde Dios me ha llamado. And so we help plant new churches all over North America. And we support Metro missionaries. And uh, also there's a little thing coming up called Christmas for Christ. And I want to thank this church for supporting In fact, I have about seven little fridge magnets right here. It's a little reminder about Christmas for Christ. I'm going to give these to the first seven kids that are on a pair of get Churches. Amen. It is indeed an honor to be here today. And I don't take this for granted. But it's a very serious thing to minister the word of the Lord. And I believe this is in God's plan. And I believe the Lord gave me a word for today. So I want to go to the word of the Lord. Amen. Let's read from Daniel chapter 6 and verse 20. Amen. Then we'll go back to the New Testament and the book of Ephesians in just a moment. But first, Daniel 6 and verse 20. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, listen, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, He, he said, Daniel, I see you in the lion's den. I have a question for you. Tengo una pregunta para ti. Is your God able to Dios deliver Dios me de from the lions? Capítulo 6, verso 20. Acercándose al pozo, llamó a voces a Daniel con voz triste y le dijo, Daniel, siervo del Dios viviente, el Dios tuyo, a quien tú continuamente sirves, ¿te ha podido librar de los leones? Everyone say, is your God able? Amen. Amen. 
Let's read from Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Vamos a leer de Efesios capítulo 3 verso 20. And we find the answer to that question. Con, encontramos la respuesta a la pregunta. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Y aquel que es poderoso para hacer todas las cosas mucho más abundantemente de lo que pedimos o entendemos según el poder de que actúa en nosotros. If you've ever asked the question, is God able? Si has preguntado la pregunta, Dios es capaz? Or if you've ever had a co-worker that wondered if your God was able. O si has tenido un compañero en el trabajo preguntando si Dios, si tu Dios está de, es capaz. Or if you've ever been in a storm so strong that you wondered is God able. O si has estado en una tormenta pensando si Dios es capaz. I believe the word's going to speak to us today. Creo que la palabra nos va a hablar hoy día. And remind us that God is able. Y recordarnos que si Dios es capaz. Let's worship the Lord together. God bless you. You can be seated if you like. Amen. Amen. A little boy was sitting on a park bench. Un niño estuvo sentado en. And he had an open Bible. Con una Biblia abierta. And he was just loudly exclaiming, "God is able! God is able!" Muy alto. Dios es capaz. Dios es capaz. And along came a, a professor from the local university. Vino un profesor de la universidad local. And he kind of felt sorry for the little boy. He, he was so unenlightened. He believed in God. And the professor was going to enlighten him in the ways of science. And so he said, son, don't you have any idea that God doesn't exist? ¿Tienes alguna la idea que Dios no existe? And the little boy said, y el niño dijo, But I just read that God opened the waves of the Red Sea so Israel could cross over. Pero acabo de leer que Dios abrió las olas del Mar Rojo para que ellos, los israelitas pudieran cruzar. The professor tried to uh, open his eyes to the realities of the Bible. El profesor intentó de abrir los ojos a la verdad de la Biblia. And explain away the miracles. Para explicar los milagros. And he said that can be explained by science. Le dijo, se puede explicarlos por la ciencia. Modern scholarship has shown that the Red Sea at that time was only 10 inches deep. El estudio moderno se dice que en el, aquel día el Mar Rojo solamente tenía 10 pulgadas. So it was no problem for Israel to cross. Realidad, no era problema para la Israel, las israelitas de cruzar. The little boy was stumped. El niño estuvo... He, won, he looked back at the man and then back at his Bible. Le miró al hombre y lo vengo a su Biblia. And the man continued to enlighten the boy. Y el hombre continuó de hablar con el niño. And he turned and walked away. Y se fue. And just about the time he was two steps away. Y después de dos pasos se fue. The little boy shouted louder than ever. El, God is able. El niño gritó más alto que anterior. Dios es capaz. Dios es capaz. The professor turned around and said, "What?" El profesor volteó diciendo qué. The little boy said, "God's greater than I thought." El niño me dijo, Dios es más grande que yo he pensado. Not only did he lead the nation of Israel through the Red Sea, no solamente ha lidiado la nación de Israel por el Mar Rojo, but he drowned the whole Egyptian army in <laughs> ten inches of water. Pero un tiro en el ejército de los egipcios en diez pulgadas de las aguas. How many believe God is able? ¿Cuántos creen que Dios es capaz? It doesn't matter what anything else says. ¿Cuántos creen que Dios es capaz? It doesn't matter what you see with your eyes. It doesn't matter if it makes logical sense. It doesn't even matter what you feel. I'm telling you God is able. He's able to forgive every sin. He's able to lift you above every discouragement. He's able to heal every disease.
Because they didn't bow down to the king. God never said to Daniel. Now listen, Daniel, I do a lot of things, but I don't do lions. I'm not sure about that. In this setting, Daniel had spent an entire night in the den of lions. And the next morning, King Darius hurried and called out to Daniel. He fully expected him to be destroyed. But he looked down there. And I have to wonder, why did he even ask the question? I think maybe he was probably shocked. And stunned. But he said, Daniel, son of the living God. Has your God whom you constantly serve? I think he wanted it. Probably what he meant was, has he been able to deliver you? Right. Maybe he couldn't see back in the dark shadows of the day. And he said, maybe sarcastically, has your God been able to deliver you? I would have liked to see the look on his face when he got the answer. You see, that kind of question is only asked by someone who does not know God. Because we know God is able to do it. Hungry lions are no more a problem to God than cancer. God can heal through fiery furnaces. God can take care of us through anything. He has power over creation. Power over nature. Power over the animal kingdom. Power over the nations. Power over rulers. And kings. And those in high places. Power over demons. And I'm telling you today, he's got power over your situation. The Lord never lacks the ability and He never lacks the will to work His purpose in your life. God is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. In the last few decades, we have focused much attention upon disability. And rightfully so. We ensure that our buildings are made accessible. And appropriate employment laws. And, and civil rights and all of these things have tried to ensure that the disabled have access to as much as possible. And many of these changes have been great. And we are thankful. But in reality, all of us are disabled to some degree. We all fall short on many things. There are things we cannot do. Mankind has limitations. And we fall short. And so the opposite of disabled, which is where we live, is able. And that's where God is. Amen. Amen. 
We can only go so high. So fast. Bastante rápido. And so far as our inventions can take us. We are limited. We wrestle with doubt, fear, hurt, tragedies, problems, things in our life, obstacles. Amen. We want sometimes what we can't have. We desire things we shouldn't have. We have limited intellect, limited power, and limited life. Oftentimes we have doubts about ourselves. But we must understand that God is not limited like we are. Amen. God is able. Amen. We know that God is able. Satan many times puts obstacles in our way. But obstacles are just a pathway to his purpose. Amen. God is able. Romans 4 and 21. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Amen. Romanos 4, 21 se dice plenamente convencido de que era también poderoso para hacer todo lo que había prometido. God is able to help you through your temptation. Hebrews 2 and 18. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Hebreos 2, 18 se dice. Pues en cuanto él mismo padeció siendo tentado, es poderoso para socorrer a los que son tentados. I'm glad he's able to save us when we're tempted. tentados. God is able to save us. That's what Christmas is all about. Es lo que la Navidad está acerca de él. Amen. The great God of glory. El Dios grande de la gloria. Rolled himself in flesh. Vistió en la carne. And he came and dwelt among us. Y vino esta a morar sobre de nosotros. Luke 2 and 11. Lucas 2 y 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Right. Lucas 2 y 11 se dice. que os ha nacido hoy en la ciudad de David un salvador que es Cristo el Señor Aren't you glad we have a Savior today? Yes. He came to save you. You can't do that for yourself. But God can. He is able. Absolutely. The Bible says He's able to save us to the uttermost. He's able to change your destiny. Let me tell you a little bit of my history. My grandparents and my dad's, uh, all of his uncles, were all drunks and alcoholics and thieves. My dad's two uh, brothers were in and out of jail all their lives. We had family that was in jail for murder. All of my family have been alcoholics for many generations. Struggle with addictions. And all of this, all of this has been handed down. It was all we knew. But one day my dad said, enough is enough. And he made it to church. And he made it to the altar. And he poured out his soul to the Lord. And he said, Lord, forgive me all my sins. The Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us. That's all. Let's tell the Lord. And he's faithful and just to forgive us. And my dad was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. and problems were washed away. And my dad received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
la esperanza de la gloria. He became a new creation. Ha en nueva creación. And so today, Así es que hoy día, instead of me being an alcoholic, yo un borracho, and instead of me being in jail, and instead of me selling drugs, right, right, right. I'm preaching the word of God. Right. You know why? And so one day, Entonces, algún día, when the ship was about to sink, cuando el barco estaba en punto de hundir, they started praying. Comenzaron, comenzaron de orar. And someone knew, y alguien supió, a wonderful African American man, un af hombre africano, that knew how to pray. Americano que sabía cómo orar. And so they went to Brother John. Entonces, se fueron a hermano John and they asked him to pray. And he said, Lord, on the day when I was hungry, I went to the restaurant to get something to eat, and the sign said for whites only. And he said, one day when I was thirsty, I went to the water fountain to get something to drink, but the sign said for whites only. And he said, Lord, forgive me. But he said, when this ship sinks, let it be for whites only. Aren't you thankful the Lord loves all of us? Fear is binding. El miedo se puede atar. 
David said in Psalms 34 and 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fear. Actually, the word is plural there, all my fears. Amen. Usually we have more than one. Fear is real. It affects us in many ways. It makes us paranoid. It can immobilize us. It can stop us. It can make you do things or say things you normally wouldn't. It can make you believe things you normally wouldn't. Fear can mess you up. I'm telling you, God is able to deliver you from fear today. From fear of things that may never happen. It's an old acronym, but it's true. The English word fear is stands for false expectations appearing real. La palabra en las letras en inglés significa falsa acusaciones apareciendo reales. The the devil will plant imaginations in your mind and things that become real in your spirit. And you feel it emotionally. Yes. You can even break out of a sweat. Right. And your imagination can just get carried away. That's why Paul said, cast down the imagination. Yes. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Because his word trumps your emotion. Right. His word is more powerful than your thoughts. His word is greater than power for fear. His word is able to guide you. His word is able to give you direction. His word is powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. God is able. Bishop, sometimes I wish I had a faith pill. <laughs> when the devil stings me <laughs> with a bad thought, negative, something that uh, seems like, oh, there's no way the Lord can move in this situation. Pop that faith pill. You can do all things. <laughs> Un mal diagnosis del médico. By his stripes I am healed. We do have a faith in him. It's the word of God. The word of God is stronger than anything. You believe God is able? You believe his word is true? Then the Bible says he's never seen the righteous forsaken. He's going to take care of you. 
Do you believe that today? Do you believe God was able? This is my last point today. But I think it's important. I want you to know God is able to preserve you. He's able to keep It's actually a gardening term. It's the same word used in Genesis. When God put Adam and Eve to keep the garden. Preserve. Preserve. God wants to preserve you today. When you preserve something. You keep it sealed. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 and 13. I'm going to read it. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that you believed, listen, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. Right. En él también vosotros habiendo oído la palabra de verdad en el evangelio de vuestra salvación y habiendo creído en él, fuisteis sellados con, selladas, selladas con el Espíritu Santo de la promesa que es la arma de nuestra herencia hasta la redención de la posesión adquirida para alabanza de su gloria. Has anyone ever canned vegetables? ¿Alguien ha comido vegetales de lata? I preserve... Uh, from a garden. If you go buy jelly in the store or you buy preserves, there's a process that, that makes that food uh, keep. And so, if we're going to keep as vessels of the Lord, there has to be a process. Amen. If you're going to canned vegetables you put the vegetables in a clean jar you put it down in hot water anybody ever been in hot water <laughs> it's part of the process sometimes the Lord has to burn some things out of our life but don't worry this fiery trial is going to make you better you're not being punished. You are being prepared. And you're being preserved. God is able to preserve you. But there's a process. So they take the can out of the hot water. And they set it on the counter. And there is a seal of that jar. And when it begins to cool, there is a pop. It's that jar sealing. And if the, you didn't hear the sound, then it didn't seal properly. Amen. Amen. Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3 8, the wind bloweth where it listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof. And then the Bible says, we are sealed. With the Holy Spirit of promise. And just as there is a sound when fruit and vegetables are sealed, there is a sound when we, the vessels of the Lord, are sealed. And it's a sound from heaven. Like a rushing mighty wind. It's speaking in a heavenly language. Speaking in other tongues as the Spirit is over. And that is the pop of the Holy Ghost. That is the sound of the seal of the vessel of God. Amen. When you receive the Holy Ghost, there is a sound. It is our most unruly member, the tongue. Speaking. Speaking the praises of the Lord. Can I get a witness today? Yeah. I think there's a popping of the Lord going on around here. 
speaking. There's been some hablando, speaking in tongues. It's the seal of the message. And we have to have that because because food won't keep by itself. La, la comida no está guardado solo. It has to be sealed. Tiene que estar sellado. And we can't keep by Nosotros ourselves. No podemos guardarlo. We have to be sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Too much corruption. Too much hate. But I'm telling you, if you have the Holy Ghost today, you can be preserved through all of that. In fact, if you are sealed, there can be all kind of chaos going on around you. And all sorts of corruption all around you. But the Lord will keep that from you and, and preserve you from that because you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. I wouldn't leave this service today unless I was sealed with the Holy Ghost. Because when you're sealed, you will keep and the Lord will keep you through everything. Nothing can spoil a vessel that is sealed and preserved. And you can be preserved unto the day of redemption. God will keep you. God will keep your family. I know parents right now, they're afraid when sometimes you send your kids to school. You can't walk the halls with them. But God is able to preserve them. God is able to preserve them. God is able to keep them. You may be in the middle of all kinds of chaos right now. Things may be kind of crazy right now. But you can be sealed. And you can be preserved. In the Holy Ghost. But they won't affect you because you are preserved. God is able to preserve you. And the Bible says that in Ephesians 4.30 that he will keep you unto the day of redemption. He will seal you all the way. Amen. God is able. Everybody say, God is able. Whatever you need today, God is able. The Lord's about to do something great here in this service. I want you to stand with me. I want to tell you this story. The Lord is going to preserve you today and keep you all the way. My wife and I visited a museum in Kansas City last year. It was a, a steamboat museum. The USS Arabia had gone down in the Missouri River. Back in 1856. It was loaded down with supplies. Headed out west as the west began to expand. And it had everything that a family would need. It had tools, food, clothing, everything. Well, in the 1990s, early 90s, they found this ship at the bottom of the river. And they, many, many years they've been gathering all the supplies out of the ship. And in this museum, they have it all on display. All of these things that were preserved under the Missouri River. And when we went in the museum, we get a little orientation video. And one of the team members that 
actually did the recovery was there. Uno de los miembros que le lo recuperaron es el guardia para preguntar las preguntas diciendo las historias. And he, he told this story. Y dijo esta historia. He said one day they were busy, they'd been working on this all day long. Le dijo, Algún día they were tired, they were hungry. They were hungry. And they opened up a crate that contained caja. all of these jars of pickles. Muchas jaras de pickles. These pickles had been preserved about 150 years ago. Wow. And they were in the bottom of the So they were hungry. <laughs> they kind of looked at each other like, I wonder. So they opened up the sink. One of those guys popped a pickle in his mouth. And this guy that was there said they were just as crispy and fresh as they were the day they were preserved. Wow. Wow. After 150 years. You know why? Because they were sealed properly. If you were sealed properly with the Holy Ghost, Let the Holy Ghost move. 